Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Amma ba'd Ahabat tafillah Continue on in our study or beginning back in our study <coughs> And we reached uh, the ch uh, chapter 6 about ablution or wudu um, In Imam Fuzan's book Hafidhullahu Ta'ala Malakhis Faqiyya And in the chapter ablution is referring, of course, to the wudu, how to purify ourselves for prayer. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al-kareem, Ya ayu ladhina amanu, Ida kumtum mila salat, Faqsulu wujuhukum, Wa aidiukum mila marafiq, Wa amsuhu bi ruusikum, Wa arjulukum mila al-ka'abain. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabihi al-kareem, O you who have believed, When you rise to perform prayer, So when you begin to pray, Establish your prayer, Wash your faces <clears throat> and your forearms to the elbows and wipe over your heads and wash your feet to the ankles. This verse states that performing ablution whenever rising to prayer is obligatory and tells us which organs should be washed and those which should be wiped during ablution. And this ayah, it specifies what part of them should be washed and wiped. So all of that is contained in this ayah. That's why it's a very important ayah to memorize the ayah of wudu. Ya ayu ladhina amanu idha kumtu mila salat faqsulu wujukum faqsulu wujukum wa aidiyukum mila al-marafiq wa amsuhu bi rusikum wa arjulukum mila al-ka'bain. Which means, O oh, you who have believed, when you rise for prayer, wash your faces and your forearms to the elbows and wipe over your heads and wash your feet to the ankles. And this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 6. So every Muslim should know that ablution has certain conditions. And we talked about before, conditions are what? Before the act of ibadah. Before the act of ibadah, any act of worship, <clears throat> when we talk about conditions, we're talking about that which comes before. It comes before the action, and it must be maintained throughout the action. So, for example, uh, the uh, from the shurut or the uh, the conditions for prayer for salat is wudu, is tahara that you have to be pure, pure. You have to have purification. That means you have to have purification before salat, which is salat is the act of ibadah. And, it, and your purification must be maintained throughout Salat. So it's not just a precondition, but it must be maintained throughout the action of Ibadah. So for example, if you are praying, if you made wudu before prayer, then you break your wudu anytime during the Salat or anytime before the Salat. Then it's an obligation, obviously, for you to make wudu again. And so that means if you're in Salat, no matter what rakah, no matter where you are in your prayer, you have to break your, your Salat immediately and go make wudu. Even if you feel shy, even if the Imam is praying, whatever the case may be, even if you're the Imam, you, <clears throat> you must uh, go and make wudu. You must uh, purify yourself because it is impermissible, haram, to continue praying without wudu. And even some of the ulama, they say that this is a form of making fun of the religion. And some of them even go as far and say that this is a, a type of kufr, a type of disbelief. It's the zabidin, that you're making fun of the religion. So it's very important to make sure that you have this condition throughout the salat. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because for it to be sahih and accepted, it is like Salat. It has the Ahkam like Salat. Let me finish and then we'll uh, continue. <clears throat> so every Muslim must know evolution as certain conditions, obligatory acts, and practices of the Sunnah to be observed while performing it. Both conditions and obligatory acts must be fulfilled as much in, as possible in order to ensure the val validity of your evolution and thus the validity of your Salat. As for the acts of the Sunnah, Related to ablution, you know, related to wudu, they are considered complementary complementary practices that guarantee the perfection of ablution. So, meaning your sunnah, this 
uh, you know, is perfecting your ibadah, perfecting your wudu. So when we are talking about sunnah actions here, you know, regarding matters of fiqh and how the fuqaha spoke about sunnah, uh, we're talking about actions that are like uh, extra, that are mustahabat, you know, actions that are recommended. Okay, so for example, making, uh, using the miswak and things like this, that those are some of the actions that are recommended. They are not ob obligatory, meaning if you don't do them, it's not going to nullify your tahara. Your tahara is still okay. Taib. Observing, acts, observing these acts of sunnah during ablution increases one's reward, yet abandoning them does not affect the validity of ablution. The conditions of ablution. So this is very important. So these are the eight conditions of wudu, of, of, of purification, uh, of ablution. First, of course, is being a Muslim. So we all fit that characteristic. Uh, second is being mentally sound. Also, so that you have to be stable mentally. Meaning, if someone is mentally uh, mentally impaired, or someone, meaning as people say or used to say, retarded. Okay, they're mentally retarded, or you know, they're mentally impaired. We say, or challenged. You know, there's all kind of muslalahat or ways of talking about it. That that person, depending on the the uh, the uh, amount. Or the the level of their their impaired or mentally challenged, that is going to determine whether they're held accountable or not. Okay, so someone who's slightly mentally challenged or impaired, that obviously, and they're cognizant of the salat and they're cognizant, they're not like the one who sometimes is totally gone, or maybe they're schizophrenic, whatever the case may be, they suffer from severe dementia or what have you. Or likewise, those scholars mention also often, and, and according to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Rufiya Aklam Ala Thalatha, that the pin is lifted on three, and one of them he mentions a naim had to yafiq, is the one who, or a naim had to yustaykhith, the person sleeping until they awake, and the person who lost their consciousness until they awaken. So obviously, if you are you lose consciousness this also breaks your wudu if you totally lose conscious you fall fainted okay uh and there's a lot of other details with regards to some of these issues but just giving you an idea so you have to be mentally sound that's another condition the second the third is having uh is being tamayiz which means that you are mature you're mature like you've entered puberty uh, and you can you know distinguish between right and wrong. The fourth is having the intention of performing uh, ablution. So you must have a nia. You don't. So this is very important too. When you're going to pray <clears throat> and you're going to make wudu or you're going to make ghusl, you make nia for that. You have to make your intention for that act of ibadah because you're going to worship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The fuqaha do have some differences, but we're going to mainly concentrate on what we believe to be the most sound and more in accordance with the uh, madhab of Imam Ahmed. Rahmatullahi rahmatin wasiyah. So, that you must have in intention, and this is in accordance to the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ when he said, Inna ma'amalu bin niyad. Verily, actions are tied to the intentions. So therefore, if you want to make Ghusl, uh, Ghusl Shari, because Akramakum Allah, you fluid came out. Or uh, for the women, they had their, their menses, and then they pure, they're on purity now, and they need to make Ghusl. That is a Ghusl Shari. That means they have to, you have to have intention. Your intention is not just, you know, I just want to get clean. Oh, it's so hot here. Let's cool down. No, those, that's not your intention so your intention has to be on ibadah that you're doing that so that way you can be prepare yourself so you're uh prepared for prayer so very important to have the intention uh imam fozan says according to the aforementioned four conditions ablution is invalid if performed by a disbeliever an insane person <clears throat> a young child who does not distinguish between right and wrong or one who does not have the intention of ablution 
upon performing it, such as performing it as a way of refreshment, as we said, hot weather, things like this, uh, or as a means of cleaning oneself. You know, if you just want to clean yourself, no. Your intention should be that it's an act of ibadah, and so there are some characteristics which are different, obviously, certain things that need to be in place, and we'll talk about that more once we get into ghusl. Uh, the fifth condition is using pure water. Your water has to be clean, pure water. It doesn't mean it has to go through your burqi, but it means that it has to be, uh, it has to be pure. It can't be mixed with impurities like urine, like uh, pork saliva, like uh, you know, uh, you know, impurities, blood, and things that make it impure. Okay, it should be pure water. Uh, also, number six, using legally obtained water. And this is according to the Medheb of Imam Ahmed, meaning that in accordance with the Medheb of Imam Ahmed, if you steal water from someone, if you steal some water uh, it, or it was unlawfully acquired, you force someone, that your tahara with that water is invalid. It's, it's not a significant wudu and you cannot pray like that. That's according to the Medheb. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. I don't hold that view. You know, other fuqaha have a different view. I don't hold that view that if you steal water, that it, it doesn't, you know, it still removes the hadith. It still removes the impurities. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But according to the madhab, and this is what Imam Fuzan is mentioning, uh, and that's his view, is that, uh, that uh, if it's taken by force, it, illegally obtained water cannot uh, be used for... Tahara, and it doesn't. It makes that impure. Uh, your your tahara invalid. Seventh is that it, uh, being preceded by istinja or stijmar when necessary. Meaning, istinja is a kromakum Allah when you clean your private parts with water. Istinja. We we know this. You when you go to the bathroom. Whether it's number one, number, number two, you wash your private parts with water. If you don't have water, or uh, or you can use both, then istijmar. The best, the fuqaha say, the best is making istij, istinja with istijmar. Meaning using ist, istij, istijmar is using rocks. Okay, so the scholars they say the best is to combine, and they say also that some of the scholars now some there's disagreement, but we're going to give you what we believe to be most correct that it's okay. Of course, you can use toilet tissue in uh, bedelin or in exchange in, instead of uh, instead of using rocks because obviously we're in the house. We're not going to go get some rocks probably and have them sitting in the bathroom for uh, istijmar. So the best is if you can use toilet paper and water, you know, wet toilet paper or something like this uh, to make istinja or istijmar. So if you need to, if you went to the bathroom before you're going to pray, before you're going to make tahara, then that's wajib, you must. You know, you, you must make istinja or istijmar anytime, anyway, when you have used the bathroom. You know, that is from the khuluk of the Muslim. That is from the manners and adab of the Muslim and the purity and cleanliness of the Muslim. And unfortunately, you will be surprised. Allah must stand, there are, I dare to say, many Muslims that don't practice that even. You know, that aren't cognizant. And I know personally, I've seen so many people who don't wash their hands. And this is criminal. You know, this is terrible. So it's very important to always clean yourself when you go to the restroom and always wash your hands that's just you know even a lot of non-muslims from various communities practice this but unfortunately there's a large amount of people around the world from muslim and non-muslims who don't even wash their hands after they use the bathroom wallah mustaan the eighth uh, condition is removing what may prevent water from reaching the skin of ablution Okay, so if you have mud, if you had, uh, Imam Fozan says that is, the one performing ablution has to remove anything covering the organs of ablution, such as mud, dough, wax, accumulated dirt, thick paint, etc. Things that will prevent the water from 
get into the skin. Yeah, anything that's going to prevent the water from uh, getting to the skin. Cat worms? I don't know about cat worms. Okay, give me a second. Fine. So, quickly we'll go over the obligatory acts of ablution. There are six obliga obligatory acts of wudu, okay? Related to washing the organs, uh, washing your body for wudu. First, washing the whole face. Washing the whole face involves rinsing the mouth and the nose with water. So the nose and the mouth, uh, especially according to the method, is considered part of the face, okay? Uh, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Fuck, so you, you know, wash your face So it, it doesn't say wash your nose Wash your mouth But that is included We know that from the sunnah of the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And also the interpretation Of the ulama sunnah in, in the past Up until now That they included the nose and the mouth As a part of the uh, uh, As a part of the face Okay so a uh, mouth and with water according accordingly one's evolution is void if one washes one's face without rinsing both the mouth and the nose with water this is because the mouth and the nose belong to the face and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says kitab al -Karim, wash your faces as we mentioned thus allah commands washing the whole face during evolution so whoever disregards washing any part of the face is considered to be disobedient to the command of allah exalted moreover the prophet wasalam, used to rinse his mouth and nose with water when performing evolution as we mentioned secondly washing the forearms including the elbows allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and your forearms, your forearms to the elbows, uh, meaning washing them, including the elbows, as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam used to do, according to a hadith narrated in this regard. It is also stated in another hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam washed his hands during evolution until he reached the upper arms. This indicates that the elbows are included when washing the arms with evolution. Okay, so include the whole elbow, even though if you wanted to take a literal and one interpretation that the the Arabic says ila ila marafik, you know, to the elbow. The scholars mention that this ila in in the Arabic it means it refers to ma'a, you know, with meaning including the elbow. Right. Third, wiping over the whole head. Wiping over the head includes the ears, for Allah exalted B says and wipe over your heads. <clears throat> Moreover, the Prophet ﷺ said, The ears are treated as part of the head, related by Ibn Majah, Adar Qutni, and other compilers of hadith. Therefore, it is incorrect to abandon wiping over the ears, for it is insufficient to wipe over one part of the head and neglect another part during ablution. Fourth, washing the feet, including the ankles. During ablution, the feet must be washed, including the ankles. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And wash your feet to the ankles. Here, the preposition to, again, ila, uh, means with. So it means ma. You know, it means with. Uh, according to the hadith pointing out how ablution is performed and through which it is stated that the whole feet must be washed, including the ankles. This is also a rud or refutation of all of those people who either deny the sunnah or try to deny some of the sunnah and say, oh, I follow the Quran. You know, that's the only thing authentic. Because they couldn't practice their Islam without it, without the sunnah. Yes. Impossible. We know how all the details, we know what these ayat mean and how they're practiced according to how the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam practiced. So beware of anyone who says, I only follow the Quran. If you ever have anybody who's a teacher, who's lecturing to you, run out of there quickly. This person is a deviant without doubt. We don't have to ask any other questions about it. We know they are a deviant to either the degree some of them reach the level of where they're not even Muslim anymore, and some of them they're just a mubtadiya. Okay? So you want to stay away from people who disregard the sunnah of the Prophet because that is the masdar of Islam, kitab wa sunnah. But the fifth thing, and this is the ikhtilaf, a lot of difference with the ulama in here, is sequence. So we must do it in order, in the order of the ayat. The decreed sequence has to be observed while 
performing evolution. To clarify, one begins with washing the face, followed by the hands, then wipes over the head, and finally washes the feet, as clearly shown in the verse, O oh, you will believe, when you rise uh, for prayer, wash your faces and your forearms to the elbows, and wipe over your heads, and wash your feet to the ankles. As we mentioned in Surah al Maida. The Prophet used to follow that order while performing ablution, saying, This is ablution without which Allah does not accept any prayer. So that's a hadith uh, narrated, uh, collected in Abu Dawood. The sixth thing is succession. This means to wash the organs successively without any interval. So this is important that one limb does not dry for the next. So if you're washing and then you get a phone call, you, you washed your hands and you washed out your mouth and your nose and, uh, and you, you wiped your face and you made a sting, I mean, uh, it's the shop was the sting, it's the it's the mar, uh, it's the thumb. You, you blew it out of your nose, okay? You put it in your mouth, you, you did that, your face is wet, and then you take a phone call, and then your face dries. No, you, you must be still active in your wudu and the limbs not drying. That's the hud that uh, the fuqaha mentioned. Uh, without pause as much as possible. Thayb. So these are the obligatory acts of ablution that must be fulfilled. Uh, and scholars disagree they are they have differences of opinion regarding the tesmiyah meaning saying bismillah upon starting the evolution some say it's an obligation some say it's it's recommended at any rate according to all muslim scholars it is permissible to start evolution with tesmiyah and it should not be abandoned so say bismillah this is the safest thing is to say bismillah before you're doing that and bismillah is seeking barakah for what you're doing in, in almost anything that you're doing you know of course in anything that's lawful that's halal uh, and uh, I think we will we'll quickly go over this just really quickly uh, the acts of sunnah so he mentions that he says whatever acts done in addition to the above mentioned obligatory acts of evolution are deemed desirable so the acts of sunnah that we're referring to when we mean sunnah here we're talking about those things which are mustahab those things which are recommended number one using the miswak during evolution the uh, virtues and the way of using suwak have been previously clarified in particular suwak is to be used while rinsing the mouth with water during evolution in in order to ensure the cleanliness of the mouth. And this we know according to the Sunnah of the Prophet and he said, uh, he, he mentioned that if he didn't fear for his his uh, ummah difficulty, uh, if I lola and shukla ala ummati liyamurtuhum bi suwak in the kulli salat or in the kulli wudu. wudu. So the Prophet ﷺ said, if I wasn't fearful upon my ummah, I would order them to make, uh, uh, use the miswak with every wudu. Okay? So it shows us how important it is. It's not obligation. No sin if you leave it. No problem if you leave it. But it's better for you and you're more agile if you brush your teeth with it too. At least after your wudu or what have you. Uh, second, starting evolution with washing the hands three times. So this is sunnah. Washing them when you, you know, you start to wash your hands in the sink before you wash your face. That that, uh, washing that three times, that this is sunnah. This is sunnah. This is because the hands are a means through which one dips out water and, you know, you, you need clean hands. So before washing the face, washing the hands three times, this is sunnah. It's not an obligation. If you leave it, you're, there's no harm in your salat. But the third, starting with rinsing the mouth and the nose. Uh, so before washing the face, as stated in various hadith, when one is not in a state of fasting, one should rinse them inside and out, making water spread all throughout the mouth and sniffing water when rinsing the nose. You know, and, and, and there's different ways you can do that. You can do it the mouth uh, separately and the nose, or you can do it one with same one water and do both. Okay. Uh, the fourth sunnah. Uh, inserting one's wet fingers into one's if so, for a man who has a thick beard going into the beard like this making sure you know he's getting all, getting it all wet you know getting trying to get to the base of his uh, you know to the skin and getting wet 
and also ensuring that water reaches all of its parts and washing one's fingers and toes well, especially between them. So you can use water, but the sunnah to, you to get the extra reward and to make sure is getting in between the fingers. You know, in the fingers and in between the toes when you're washing. The fifth, starting with the right before the left. <coughs> so this is also as in washing the hands and the feet. You know, starting with the right side before the left. Uh, and the last thing, uh, washing the face, hands, and feet up to three times instead of once. So three times a sunnah. You don't have to. So, for example, if you only have a little bit of water and you wash your uh, you wash your face once, and you wash your arms up to the your hands to the elbow once on each side, and, and your feet once, then that will be sufficient for your wudu. Okay, it doesn't have to be three times. Three times is sunnah, and 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 it's not good to leave that. Unless you're in a situation, sometimes when I'm hiking and I'm, I have very little water, I might, you know, make, you know, if I just have a little bit of water or something like this, then I might, you know, uh, not uh, practice that. So this is, uh, in general, what we wanted to cover on this chapter from Imam Fozan's book. And until the next lesson, we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil.